just did awkwardly walk in. And I had a really rude, good time. Fueled by magic and promises, tonight's guest is one of the most electrifying musical acts probably in the entire country. Certainly someone that breaks my heart. He writes love songs and, well, he jams out like, ah, fuck, I almost had it. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, so, fueled by magic and promises, tonight's guest is uh, one of the most electrifying musical acts in the entire country. He's um, a chef, the co-owner of Bethlehem XXX, and, uh, well, he's here tonight. Everybody, Beaver Shepherd. Oh! Set, but this is all me. <laughs> Are you gonna hire him for your next album? Well, he's available. He's a hundred percent available. Sure. Bass clarinet, broken keyboards, whatever you want. He looks like my dad, so yeah, sure. <laughs> he looks like your dad? A lot like my dad, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna get into that though. Does he still do, do your does your family still live in Newfoundland where you hail from? They do. Really? They do, yeah. Newfoundland. The uh, it's a great place. Do you miss it? All the time. Really? Yeah, it's so great. Good people. Great people. Great air. Every time I go there, I like, just start breathing. You can breathe again. Yeah, I, I actually saw a thing on TV years ago that um, uh, there was this kid that couldn't breathe air anywhere else in the world. So they brought him to some forest in Newfoundland where it's the cleanest air in the world. And only there can he live. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 I heard about something like that. Yeah? Really? Yeah. yeah people, people have died from the wrong air. <laughs> it's true. There's a family story. Im immigrants. I, I had a, I had a, a brother of uh, my grandfather uh, had to go back overseas because he was going to die. He was going to die from the air in Montreal. Um, not in Montreal, but in close to Newfoundland in like... Northern Maine. I think everything's better on the East Coast. I think uh, here you must have arrived here and thought, oh, I'm surrounded by assholes. Oh, excuse me. Holy it's shit, there's Captain an asshole Kirk. right now. <laughs> Captain Kirk. I'm going to turn that off. Oh, that's not part of it? No, that's not part of it. I'm just an asshole. Uh, yeah. Typical Montreal asshole. I forgot to turn off my phone. I love assholes. Oh, gosh. Do you ever? Yeah. Because they taste like truffles. You, <laughs> this I've heard. Yeah. I've heard this earlier. I've heard this earlier. For, uh, do you do you cook with a lot of truffles? So I expensive. don't. I don't. I don't. So expensive. I I've don't. eaten truffles once in my life only. Mm -hmm. It changed my life, though. Changed your life. Well, I think about them all the time. Your ingredients changed your life. Well, I just think about it. Coriander Nothing changed ever... my life. Coriander. Really? Changed my life. How, how's that? Because that was like one of the first things I think changed my life. I don't know. I just tasted it and I was like, wow, what the fuck is this? No. Oh. The whole rest of the world was eating parsley. <laughs> and I was in Newfoundland. I've never, you know, that was just the most. That was the most special thing. When you think about it, seventy like percent of the world is eating cilantro, like crazy. Mm. And the other thirty percent is eating parsley. But where I'm from, all we need was parsley. It must have been stifling for you over there. You do all these things, like you you make music, you cook, you you make really good music videos. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Uh, yeah, she. That's funny. It happened. Uh, it happened uh, just above here. Really? I had made a music video uh, in this building. In this building. No. Yeah. Is that you can the check show? it out on uh, beavershepherd.com. Lump sum. Lump sum. Yeah, it was kind of a friends of mine just said it was actually with complete surprise. I guess I'm smoking now. Well. Okay. Whatever. I'll be honest. You're you're the only guy I think I'm gonna smoke with. And it was a surprise. It was a nice surprise. My friend Matty, uh, my friend Matt, Matty Williamson, Williamston. He lives in Moncton now, but anyway, out of the blue, just gives me a call. Hey, come up, come to the Rialto upstairs, Lowell Human Steps dance studio place. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we're I know that familiar. place, too. Yeah, and then I just walked in, and there was a bunch of cameras, and there was a bunch of dancers, and a music video happened. Uh, well, uh, Ricardo Villalobos is going to do a remix of one of your songs. Yeah, it's kind of insane. That's a big deal. I don't even, you know, I didn't, uh, I don't, I'm not a huge, like, I, I love electronic music. I have my, at one point, I hate it all. All uh, guitar music. I remember there was a moment there, like, why? You know, I hate, now it's gone back where I'm like, I don't I, you know, I kind of hate techno music, but it all kind of goes back and forth. Anyway. Do you was, even really hate it? I always hate it. Just, yeah. You just get sick of everything. Yeah, and yeah. you're like, I understand why I'm paying $40 for that. And I understand why I'm paying $40 for a band. But uh, 
You know, I guess uh, when I said I, I stopped doing drugs. You did not. Of course I did. You stopped doing drugs. Yeah, I don't do drugs anywhere at all. Really? That's mm. a shame. Mm -hmm. That's a shame. The, there was a quote I read that um, the day you stop doing drugs and move out of Montreal is the end of the nightlife in Montreal. Oh, wow. That's it. I read that. Nice. Yeah. That's great. You think it's possible? Do you uh, have that much power? Different. I feel a lot of people kiss your ass. Mm. Perhaps with good reason, you know? I don't know. I mean, you're certainly a lot more interesting than most I'm musicians friendly. that I meet. You are friendly. friendly people. You are friendly. And those eyes. It's a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of wanderlust, for sure. I work a lot. But yeah, you know, I, I, I meet a lot of people. How long have you been in Montreal? It's been 14 years. 14 years? I know. It's crazy. How come we've only started hearing about you like the last five? Because I cooked for the first eight. Really? Yeah. Was that enjoyable? Or were you? Yeah, crying? it was great. It was, really? It was actually McMillan that brought me to the city. Really? Yeah, David, you had him on here. That's uh, right. I, I love Dave McMillan. Yeah, he yeah. Brought, he got me my first job, and then he used to call me Little Jojo. Little Jojo? Yeah, because I looked like a little Portuguese boy. Well, and I had like true. a cute little floppy white hat, and I was like my little fresh out of cooking school. And they were playing little games with me. I remember Dave would go, he'd come in and he'd say, Jojo, take off that stupid hat. <laughs> and I'd like to get the hat. And then Fred Moran, his partner, would mm -hmm. come in and be like, Jojo, put on your hat. And I was a little kid, so I didn't really know that. Mm. They were just fucking with me. Yeah, they were just fucking with you. Yeah. Chefs fuck with people. They do the fuck with you. Fuck off! Do you, do, you, do you have any questions for a successful musician, Tony? Successful. Well, you know, <laughs> Music is a success upon completion. Is that, is that, is that true? Would you agree? That's all, that's all there was. All there is. Yeah, man. When it's done, <laughs> you just transmitted messages. Yeah, yeah. Success if it's if it's uh, like a radio broadcast tower shooting off its signal. Does it do it? Yes, it's successful. We're trying to transcend economy. I'll be honest. What, what, what I really like is um, let me move this here. We got a little, we got a little microphone thing. Oh, got a little microphone there. It's all them scarves. He loves scarves. He loves scarves. Uh, I can stay fat. I'm fucking fat too. And it too. just looks, you know, it just looks. I'm not that fat, but you, you, you hide I'm it. I'm actually really fat. Like, like Dom DeLuise used to hide it. Right? Yeah, it's good to hide it. Yeah, he said, "I'm, I'm fucking fat." This is my first cigarette on the show, because I'm, I, 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 I've quit. Technically, I've quit. Oh fuck. Yeah, it's hard. Okay, well, it's me hard. too. This is my first one ever. Really? Yeah. This is, is your first cigarette ever. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. That's really nice. I'm really glad we're bringing it back for the kids. You know, I mean, they need a role model. What are they gonna do? Not, not. Smoke cigarette? Can I tell you what I really like about your music is... I was going to say something, my mom smokes three packs a day. Does she? So she smokes for me. She does. Yeah. She does. Did she smoke while she was pregnant with you? Probably. Mm -hmm. Back then, it didn't matter. No, it was healthy then. Yeah. Yeah, it was okay. So. I mean, you, you have two eyes. You're okay. You're all right. It's all going. It's all moving. But I was going to say, what I really like about your music it is, uh, quite frankly, it's your voice. You know, I really like your voice. It, it, it reminds me of something between Neil Young and Vincent Gallo. Nice. And I know a lot of people don't like Vincent Gallo. I do. I, I think he's a maverick. I, I think he's doing exactly what he wants to do, you know? He's a nice guy. You met him? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen his films. He You've has seen a his lovely films. penis. He does. It's yeah. huge. Yeah. It's huge. It's huge. But I have a lot of different voices, you know? I got a. Secret Secret Girl, my uh, project mm -hmm. with uh, Irina Lazaranu and uh, Pascal Olivier. It was me and Pascal Olivier actually formed it uh, uh, in uh, Le uh, Lachine, in Lachine. We went down there for four days to take care of a house, set up all the gear. Just kind of went on a mad tear, as you say, oh, yeah. recording for four days straight. And then all of a sudden, uh, something blossomed out of it. Who's Irina Lazaranu? Well, I met Irina New Year's Day about two years ago, and uh, she's uh, actually a supermodel. Is she? She used to date Pete Doherty in uh, this band called the Baby Shambles or the Libertines, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, she just, yeah, we were all good in New Year's Day up, you know, and she walks in and we all grew to like her, and apparently she's a musician, and she uh, one day offers us a, a gig with the amount of money I could not, I could not refuse. Really? So then we, uh, she, we started using her uh, in Secret Secret Girl. So she's our Secret Secret Girl. So Secret Secret Girl, country, country, John Shape. John Shape. 
you're also in a band that I find very difficult to say, Brant Brower Frick. Brant Brower Frick, yeah. I met, uh, they headlined New Tech a couple years back. And uh, a friend of mine dated, uh, was dating the drummer, and uh, they wanted me to like show them around. Mm -hmm. So we hung out and played them some songs. And uh, uh, they just, they loved it. And then they, like, a couple months later, they uh, invite me to go to Switzerland to play a bunch of shows. Wow. Yeah, and I totally just kind of free jazzed up uh, some shows in Switzerland. Wow. Well, actually just one show. How, what did you think of the Swiss? Well, they uh, they didn't like me. <laughs> really? No, the whole well, we, they don't know we were supposed They're... to we were supposed to play six shows, mm -hmm. and uh, the first show, I came out and I was a little bit you know it was you know vodka for my homies and just being really you know I guess they're a little bit conservative there. Yeah. Well, um, they're Nazi sympathizers. Yeah. So <sighs> that must take a lot a toll on a culture. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, yeah, anyway, I played that one show and then the whole rest of the tour was canceled. Really? Yeah. What a bunch of Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! That note, That's um, one right there. On that note, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back, and we're going to talk about uh, Beaver's art. Finding a phone in a car isn't that unusual anymore, except when it leaves the car yeah, for greener pastures, the high seas, or a leisurely lunch. Radio Shack keeps you in constant communication with their affordable, transportable cellular telephone. Hello? Oh, well, yes, he's right here. It's for you. Yes, I heard about the merger. Buy 100 shares. The affordable, transportable cellular telephone. Only at Radio Shack. Sometimes I think, Brooke, would you like him to get a little closer? And then I think, yeah, I'd like him to get a little closer. That's when I'm glad I've got Arid Extra Dry Spray. Arid helps stop wetness before embarrassing odor can start. Very reassuring. In fact, Arid is America's leading spray against wetness and odor. So if you like getting closer, and you hate being embarrassed, get Arid Extra Dry. And we're back. You're a huge fan of Tony Izzy, I'm glad. Yeah, I love Tony Izzy, he's amazing. I'm glad. Oh, he's just laughing at me. He's a musical know. genius, he's unappreciated. Oh, I have a thing! <laughs> one of the greatest one-man bands in the city. Yeah. Stay tuned tonight. Are you going to be awake at 4 a.m.? Yeah. Tune in to CKUT 90.3. Y'all don't know space plane in the building. I got a radio show. You can check it out if you're yeah. up at that hour. It's for people like you. I've already checked it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Well, no, thank you for letting me plug my thing during the Oh, no, you, you can plug it. You can plug whatever you want. You can, he's also a babysitter. And well, uh, he walks dogs. Uh, Beaver, I saw some of your drawings. They're really good. And, I, you know, I, I kind of know a little bit about art. And uh, draw, yeah. I think they're a lot more heartfelt and loving and open than uh, a lot of so-called great artists in this country. I think you should have a show. In fact, there, there's a... should have a show, yeah. Do you have love in your life? Yeah, tons. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It's kind of the most important thing. Not, oh, you know, not any one. No, but affection. The people, the people. That's all you need is the people. <laughs> what people? You know, my Fans. roommates, the people I work with. We hire them because I love them. Hmm. That's a good way to hire. It's a good approach. Yeah, it's a yeah. great way to approach. They don't steal from you when they love you. No. Oh, wow. What is this? We love it. Tell us what that card means. It's uh, the bonding together of forces is sanctioned by the angels. So you're saying he has, has a big love coming it's, his way? It's a union of polarity that transcends material existence and brings more profundity to this sweet swinging sphere, but it doesn't need the earth to, to thrive. It, it will exist. Tony, Tony. Love is a force. It builds universes, planets, stars. Tony, is Beaver going to eat some ass tonight or not? If it is done... <laughs> Well, <laughs> I love that you picked that card randomly. That's he actually he, he he can read your cards. We can wow. we, we can stick around after that if you like. We, we can do some of that. We can do we can yeah. put it right on the show. It's Montreal. No one has anything to do. So sure. Kind of everything. No has to do. Oh, I brought you a gift. You did. Yeah, I did. No. Yeah, it's a seashell from your kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Little Andy stole my toothpaste the other day. Oh. Yeah. I I don't think he meant to. I don't think he meant to. 
Um, you're so much more somber than than I thought. I mean, this, 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 <laughs> this well, is the man. This is the man who. We don't do it. Like, ha- that's what I like. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. Yeah. Oh, you're a little cat. I'll tell you anything you want to know. You're a little. T- tell me about your mother. This is too much to know. Mom, uh, she smokes two, three packs a day. Okay. Okay. She drinks a uh, forty ounce or a day of rum. I love her. Diet Coke. Yes. She plays click click. What is click click? It's like you know the games where you just <laughs> click click on the computer. You know, click click. <laughs> She loves that. She's really good. I go home and I just, uh, you know, she watches Oprah on, I think she has like an Oprah channel or something. Oprah, I, I, Oprah I television. Think Oprah does have her own channel. Yeah, she has her own channel. And she, uh, yeah, she, she, she just uh, waits for me to make her serve her food. Do you see her often? Do you get back? I go, I go back once a year. Once a year? Yeah. But it's a long trip. She's so smart. But really? But she chooses to play click click. Yeah, it's great though. You know, you gotta, gotta love them. Yeah, man. Love uh, them. Is it? Uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's a terrible segue, but I just want to kind of confirm the greatest story about you I've ever heard, which is that there was a special at Le Pickup, a fine dinner here in my land, my Lex, depending on how you look at it, that people would order the Beaver Shepherd. And it was two dollars, and then a man would come out of the kitchen dressed as a robot and do a dance for them. Is this true? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Memories. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah that, I was trying to make some extra cash. Yeah. You know, just something else. Uh, that was me. I was the robot. Oh, you were the robot. I was the robot. Yeah. So th- that two dollars went straight into your pocket. Yeah. It was just a. I would wear a, a box. A box. Which I would just quickly alter. Because mm-hmm. there's always a box lying around. Mm-hmm. You used your imagination. That's the greatest story. I guess you don't know much. There's no, you know. It's hard Tell to me know. a story. I Tell me a story. I don't know. Some stories. I don't want to get you, you know like I, all the stories I have are just too rotten. You, just, you, uh, you, know, just, you know what it is, Beaver? I'm not cool. Like people think I'm cool. Yeah, sometimes everyone thinks you're cool. It's true. But I'm not. Like I'm not. I'm really. I'm really. I read. I I sit alone sometimes. You know. I I go to the park. Those I, are the coolest things in the world. I agree. I agree. That's where you cultivate your coolness in your moments of, of solitude. Yeah, solitude. The fortress. Of, this is the fortress of solitude, really. Yeah. You know? How do you unwind, Beaver? I unwind with uh, large uh, meals of decadence to go out and uh, splurge mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on uh, mid-range decadence. Mid-range? Yeah, mid-range decadence. What's a mid-range eatery you enjoy? I like to go to uh, Sole Mer. Sole Mare. Yeah, it's a Peruvian spot on uh, Saint Hubert. Really? Yeah, you go on a Sunday and it's all Peruvian families. You go in and you God, get. They must love you. You get the ceviche. You get the the rib steak. Uh, you get the uh, potatoes, uh, hurricana. What is that? That the, the cheese cream potatoes with the with the <laughs> eggs, the boiled eggs and the olives. I don't know if you had this stuff, but I love that stuff. Or you go to like Jano's and you get the meal for two for myself. <laughs> Yeah. Move your little. Oh, thanks. Gosh. Yeah. No, I like. I'm really into mid range. I don't really like fancy. Uh, well, you like Dave. I like fancy food, but it's just like I it's can. Expensive. I can go over here for half the price. Yeah. Yeah. Value. 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 I, mean, like I said. I guess I love value. Yeah. Me too. Like anything, you know. Yeah. You're eating this. It's expensive. It's not as good. Well, I think most people go to expensive restaurants because they're empty inside and they don't have anything else to do. Yeah. Of course. Are you worried about the end of the world? Uh, yeah, I do. I, I, I really like, I, have, I always think, I go, wow, hmm. we're so lucky. Why? To be alive. I agree. It's so sweet. Yeah, it's amazing. It's like, I, I kind of like, I'm so, I'm so greedy too. I want to, to come further close because I want to be like the last generation. Yeah. That's how dark. Yeah. I'm like, I want to be, like, I don't want to have kids. No. Not really. Mm. Nah. I think you'd be a nice dad. Yeah, you know, you know. I think you'd be nice. You have a nice voice. I think you'd sing to them. Yeah, Tell they would. Them stories. They would. They would take my niceness and just trample all over me. I'm pretty sure. I think you're talking about your wife or your future ex-wife. No, the kids. <laughs> I trampled the shit out of my parents, and I'm sure they would do the same to me. How old were you when you left home? I was uh, 17. 17. Yeah, went to cooking school, then came in PEI. Lovely times. Oh, I went to uh, R- uh, Rainbow Village once in PEI. Oh, yeah, it's amazing there. It's still there? I think, is it called Rainbow Village? Rainbow Valley? Rainbow Valley. Yeah, wow. Rainbow Valley. I can't believe I remember that. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it's uh, total shit, but it's amazing. Yeah. If you're young enough. Well, they have that giant shoe you can slide down. Yeah. You can camp. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Did, did you read... Um, Just pull it up on the internet. Let's find out all about it. No, we should. We should. No, we should. We don't need notes. But any of this crap that we know. Ah, Beaver. PEI. I, 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 I worry about that. Have you been the there? Oh, yeah. Right there. yeah, yeah, yeah. PEI, yeah. it's going to start in PEI, the end of the world. You think so? I'd say. Because the Germans are buying it all up. That and the Japs, and then they're going to start fucking, and then... The babies are gonna come out, and then whoa! Ha- half P. The ruthless, the ruthless eating habits of the Japanese, mixed with the ruthless. Uh, well, we don't have to talk about what they did, the Nazis, you know? No. Well, we should, you know. Some people say it's the only thing worth talking about. <laughs> Not them, that's for sure. It's really uh, you can't talk about it over there at all. Have you been to Germany? I go all the time. I've heard, I've heard they're totally open to talking about it. Mm-hmm. No, they're not. They're not. No, they put up giant. Uh, there's like a big monuments mm. uh, with like tons of information to show you what they what they destroyed. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like we destroyed all these churches, all these Jewish churches. We destroyed all these uh, Jewish communes or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. and part of me thinks the reason they're showing this stuff is to look. Look how much the Jewish people were here, up in our shit. Really? But that's the real dark side of me saying that. That's obviously not what they're thinking. I don't know about that. I don't trust fucking that's some, Germans. That's some seriously, I don't trust that's fucking some deri- Germans. serious dark thought. I don't know. If fucking Germans. World War One. World War Two. Uh, complete monopolization of the world economy. Give me a fucking break. They're awful people. I, I feel bad for anyone living in Germany. Hi, Jan. Hi, Germany. <laughs> and on that note, listen, Beaver, you've been a great guest. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, thanks. Thank thanks you, man. And listen, uh, have a banana. Wow. Thanks. Have it when you get there. That, that's our slogan. Into Germany? <laughs> yeah, have it when you get to Germany. I'm, I'm, le- I'm leaving soon. I'm Are leaving. you? Yeah, I'm leaving in a month back there. Finish a record with uh, Brent Barfrey. So in January, you will be in Germany. Yeah. Great. Should play the video. Uh, thanks again for joining us here on Park Avenue tonight. Have a great night, everybody. Mm-hmm. I want to tell you, I know the space man is in the building. <laughs>